Monsieur number one hides one of the most remarkable phenomena we know. This story begins in 1054 AC when ancient Chinese astronomers discovered the bright stars in the constellation of Taurus. That star was four times brighter than Venus, bright enough to be seen in the sky in the daylight during a period of 23 days and then, after that, 653 nights visible to the naked eye. A bright star will become a nemesis for emperor enemies. It can be also seen on a petrograph by ancient Anazani Indians, who lived at that time in Chaco Canyon in New Mexico. Then it slowly faded away and was forgotten for centuries, until English amateur astronomer John Beavis found a small fuzzy spot at this place in the sky in 1731. In 1758, Charles Messier mixed it up with a comet of Halley, which he was looking for in this area. So he started compiling his own catalogue, placing this nebula there, identified as Monsieur One. This nebula, reported on the Great English Atlas, seen by Dr. Beavis about 1731, according to his letter written to me on the 10th of June 1771. And here's how Monsieur catalogue started. Later it became one of the most popular celestial catalogues ever. In 1844, Monsieur One attracted the attention of Lord Ross, who made a few sketches of it. He was the first to name the nebula as Crab, and this name got stuck to the object. The first observers of Crab were Monsieur, Baudet and William Herschel. They were not able to resolve nebula into stars. However, Lord Ross and John Herschel thought they managed to resolve it, mistakenly took its filaments as chains of tiny stars. We see resolvable filament singularly disposed, springing principally from its southern extremity, and not, as is usual, in clusters, irregularly in all directions. So what is it? If you please, these are consequences of space disaster, death of a star, which ejected its upper layers forming a spherical envelope expanding in space at a speed of 1500 km per second. Currently, it is about 10 light years across. It contains hydrogen and helium and also other elements, products of nuclear fusion, like oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, iron, neon and even sulfur. Besides filaments, you can see here an internal bluish nebula shining with diffuse light, which is polarized synchrotron radiation emitted by high-energy electrons moving in a strong magnetic field. In 1949, a strong microwave and the 1968 X-ray radiation sources were discovered here. On the 9th of November 1968, using a giant telescope in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, a team of astronomers discovered here a source of periodic signals. Are these extraterrestrials? Nope, it was a new, unknown object, neutron stars called Pulsar, 30 kilometers across, spinning around with a frequency of 30 turns per second. Further investigations showed that pulsar rotation gets slower by time, and it starts emitting energy with jets of matter and matter particles, which bump into surrounding nebula, making it glow in X-ray. Perpendicular to the jets, particles create a ring-shaped shock wave, which gradually expands in nebula. M1 resides on a broad highway of the solar system, in the zodiacal constellation of Taurus, quite close to the ecliptic, a line of apparent movement of Sun on the sky. This means that sometimes comets, asteroids and even planets travel through this area and may occult the crab. This phenomenon is very interesting to determine the fine features of the central star, Pulsar and its environment. Crab can be found close to Zeta Terrace, star of third magnitude northeast from Aldebaran, main star of the constellation of Terrace. It can be easily observed through binocular. Amateurs can judge themselves whether it was easy or not for Charles Messier to mix it up with a comet. Messier 1, the Crab, is a great space high-energy lab 
which will surely bring scientists lots of new wonders.